Hello everyone, Chris here again with another video. This one today is slightly different. We're bringing, or I'm introducing something new to you. Um, we have a new component and it is for volumetric modular. So what this tool does is it generates a full module complete with posts, beams, ties, joists, everything that you need for a volumetric module, allows you to configure it, configure it, configure it, sorry, and then distribute that to, 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 to help you to build up your volumetric modular project. Um, so let's jump straight in um, and let's have a look at it. So let's maximize that view and you're gonna find this tool in your applications components, okay? So um, let's populate this model. Let's get one in here right now. So all we do is, let me do that again, we pick the starting point and then a second point. We aren't trying to dictate the length, we're just trying to dictate the span, okay? And it's it's in uh, the x-axis is your length, okay? So it's the, the span of your unit. So we pick those two points and boom, you get your, you get your volumetric unit and you can see you've got everything in there. So let's have a look a bit more in depth at the component. So if we double click on the unit, we bring up its dialog box, okay? So the first page is your setup page. So this is where you're gonna put the parameters in for your unit, okay? So the length, I've got one in here at 10 meters, um, but obviously you can set that to whatever you need it to be, and this is the same for height and width as well. By default, it's 3600, but we can reduce that to 300, uh, 3000 or millimeters or three meters, as most people would refer to it in width. So 3.6 meters wide um, and the height again. So we've got 3750. So that's the start height, which is this end. Um, and we have, you'll notice we have a second module height set up here. Um, that is to accommodate pitches in the ceiling set and the roof set. Okay, so if I go to a side view like this and I change this to four meters, you'll see that we get um, an elevation on this end and we therefore have a pitched roof. Now you can do this in two ways. You can either do it by a known value here by dimension or you can set the roof angle. So if I set it to two degrees, it will increase that roof pitch and it will calculate the end height. So you've got a couple of ways to do it, um, but I can make that level just by setting that back to 3750, which is what I'm gonna do for now and leave it at that. Um, column extensions. So it's there is a bit of a difference in, in the industry that I've, that I've identified and that's that some modular unit, um, some volumetric modular companies will have um, the, the members, the tie members, or the main bear, the main beams bearing on each other, so they'll have a full bearing unit. Others will want some kind of an air bridge or a gap or whatever you want to call it between the ceiling joist, uh, ceiling cassette and the floor cassette. And this 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 option allows you to to accommodate that. So we can set the projection of the post above the top of of, of the cassette there. Um, we can also set it below as well um, to any any value that we like. Um, I'm going to leave the columns at the top at zero so they are level. Um, the main assembly details. Now I'll talk about this in a bit more detail in a in a, in a bit and in a, in a separate topic just to explain what this means. Um, but effectively what you're getting with this tool is a multi hierarchy assembly. Okay so that means that the top level assembly is the whole unit. Okay so Tecla recognizes that as one assembly okay so that one assembly um is 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 the naming or the numbering for that main assembly is dictated here i say okay so your module name might be module 101 okay so it's the it's it's the first module on on the first floor okay maybe something like that um and you might want your module marks to be the same so this you want the start number to be 101 okay so that means that any modules that you, you, you do following this one with the same start number, we'll go 101, 102, 103. Okay, you can specify that, but that's how the numbering works. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll talk about the assemblies in a minute. Um, underneath that, you've got your column specifications. Okay, so this is where you set up the name and the class um, and the profile, etc., for your columns. And you can pick the profile very simply, hit the catalog button, that will bring up your profile database and you can pick the section size for your column in there and then continue with that. So that gives you the facility to, to change the column section. Um, and I think it's quite common to have a thick column at the bottom, a bigger column at the bottom on the bottom modules and then thinner as you go higher up. Um, but you can tailor that to suit whatever you need. So that's how you configure the main module. Then we need to drill down into the, the other hierarchical assemblies. Okay, so the next level assemblies are um, your ceiling and floor 
but before we get to those, we're going to have a look at the corner connections for the beams. Okay, so let's talk about those for a minute. So you've got two specifications here. You've got one times three, which which in which which sort of describes a single connection that connects three members. Okay, so the, these tie beams, these main beams, and the column. Okay, so if you're if you're a volumetric modular business that has a standardized pre prefabricated connection that joins those three. You're going to use that specification to call in a custom component here um, and then you will use that as your connection okay um, same thing at the floor uh, the floor connection the floor uh, the floor cassette connection um, the alternative to that is a two by two okay so you've got two connections that connect two pieces into one okay so what that means is that you can control the connections of these two beams into the column independently okay so we're going to do it this way. So the way to, to, to call in a component that you've got referenced in the catalog is hit this button. So that picks up, that brings up the component catalog. And I'm just going to simply reference 103 for this example, which is a standard fin plate. So I'm telling Tecla that I want, or Tecla structures that I'm, that I'm using 103 for the connection of these two members. But I can, ver I can, I can change the specification um, based on having a standard file saved away um, in the connection. By standard file, um, what I mean, let me modify that, let, what I mean by that is if I go to connection 103, what I can do in this component is I can configure this for a particular connection. So let's say I want a connection that's got countersunk bolts. I can apply that and then I can say that that is a standard countersunk connection. Okay, and now I've got that as what we call a standard file. Okay, so that's a, a you, you can recall that at any point um, in your project. So if I bring this back up again um, and I go to the roof cassette, if we clear those out now, I can recall those in. So let me do that again. So 103, we pick the connection and then over here I can say I want to use a standard connection. Okay, And then for the roof tie connection I'm going to use the same component. I don't have to but I'm going to and this time I'm going to pick slim and then when I modify that component you'll see I've got two different connection types all right you don't have to use the same connection you can use whatever you need to but it allows you to control those separately um, you do exactly the same thing down here for the floor um, so if I pick that button there just call in 103 but it's exactly just a repetition of what you saw before 103 here as well let's pick that and then we pick standard and we pick slim and we modify that okay and then your floor joists are done too um, underneath that you've got controls for the the column connections as well. Uh, so on the column cap describes the, the detail at the top. So again, I can go into my library and this time I can search by cap and I can pick the cap plate detail, pick my standard file, hit modify and that component gets applied. Again, you can use a custom component here. So if, if you're an organization that has a cap plate that maybe has got a locating pin, maybe it's got a hole in the top or something like that, you can set up a custom component and reference that in here for that connection. Okay, it doesn't have to be a Tecla Structures library component. Similarly for the, the column base or the column foot, um, I recommend that you use 1042 if you're not using a custom component because this is the one that works the best. Um, and I'm going to pick that as uh, a let's pick estimate. Let's just pick estimate. Um, and that's going to put in a base plate for me there. Okay. Um, again, with 1042, you might want to configure something like I have here with the base that is a bearing plate on that, that represents something that would bear onto the top of this column. But you know that that's down to whatever your connection standards are. Um, moving on to the next tab, then I mentioned these these sub assemblies before. So as far as Tecla Structures is concerned, that roof cassette is a sub assembly of the whole module assembly. Okay, so what that means is. Um, when you get to the drawings, you'll get you'll get individual assembly drawings. You'll get you should get a, a, a ceiling or a roof cassette, a floor cassette, and then a full module assembly drawing. Right. So you've got staged drawings for the assembly of the unit. So in here, we're going to be con configuring that that um, that assembly. So the joist spacing is the first specification here. By default, the spacing is 600. So we can just set that there just to modify it and just to make sure. But you'll see that the closing gap is more than 600 and that's probably not what you want to see. So we've got this offset control here, ceiling start from centre. So what that describes is the position of the joists 
against the center line of that beam. So with true, you've got your joist on the center line of, of, of the main bearing beam. If you switch that to false, what it will do is it will take the spacing of the joists, divide it by two, and then position them equally about the center line of the beam. Okay, so that's what you can see there, and we've closed that gap there. So probably compliant with what you want to see. Okay, so you've got that offset control for those joists. Um, if, if for any reason that joist has to be on the center line and you've still got this closing gap, you can use this option here to introduce a specific joist, okay, to close that gap up. So you can, you can introduce an additional joist to close that gap up, but we're just gonna, we're gonna distribute them evenly um, and leave it there. Um, quickly uh, noting over on the right hand side here, um, what you've got is orientation controls for both the blue and the green beams, well the green beams in the floor equivalent, but for, for this, this tab here, this controls the orientation of the blue beam, and the roof tie controls the orientation of, of this orange beam here. Okay, so that's either toes in, toes out. Um, so currently they're toes out, so if we change them both to inward, you'll see that they've changed orientation, now they're facing in. Um, you've also got these plain offsets, okay. So this describes the offset relative to that column. So with the blue, with the blue beam, I can offset that 20 mil, and you'll see that offset in 20 mil, or if I express that as a negative value, it'll go the other way, 20 mil. Um, so that's going to allow you to align these beams with the column in any way you like. So whether it's the inside, the outside faces that align, or whether it's on the center line, those offset controls are going to allow you to achieve that. Um, going back over to the left, we see the assembly name. So again, this is controlling the assembly name for the just of the roof cassette. Okay, and then you've got the numbering controls as well. So you might want to call this uh, roof cassette. And then you might want your assembly numbering to be RC and the start number one, for example. Okay, and then that means that that roof cassette is called roof cassette, and when the numbering is applied, that roof cassette is RC one. So everything inside there gets RC one referencing. Um, underneath there, uh, you've got the same controls that you saw on the module setup for the column, except it's for all of the components that go inside this this roof cassette. So the ceiling beams, ceiling joists, and roof ties. You can specify all of the information here. One thing I do want to highlight here is the assembly numbering over here. It looks like a duplication, but it's different, okay? So this, this, this numbering here is controlling the roof cassette assembly. What this one is controlling is the ceiling joist assembly, okay? Um, and what that means is that these joists are sub-assemblies of the roof cassette assembly, okay? Because you have a joist with a cleat that might be welded or bolted to it. Um, so you can control the joist numbering using these values here, okay? And equally, you can control the joist connections using this line here, okay? So I just wanna make that crystal clear. Um, once you've got all of that, it's time to move on to the floor, and the floor is just a, a duplication of the ceiling. They work in exactly the same way. The only thing I'm going to add on there is those offsets. Um, everything else I'm happy with, okay. Uh, well, apart from actually here, I will do this. So let's say it's floor cassette, and I'm going to prefix that FC, and I'm going to call that number one. So we'll modify that. Um, so once we've got all of that configured, We've got our unit configured. There are a few other tools that we can use to sort of embellish or build up this. So it's quite common for a, mod a volumetric modular unit to be filled out. And one of the first things there is walls, okay? And we have a tool here, framing panel tool, which you can use. It is designed for light metal framing, but it can be used uh, to, to do timber elements. All you gotta do is change the, the profile. Um, but, very simply, you can introduce a, a light metal framing wall. So you dictate the span of it along the beam that it's gonna sit on, like so, and that gives you your full panel. Um, we have other videos on, on, on these panels. Um, I'm not gonna go into a great deal of depth um, other than to sort of show you how to very quickly configure it. So let's take a face on view. You can see the thing doesn't fit very well, um, but using direct modification, I can just drag those edges and snap them um, all the way to the ends, so I can make it fit. Obviously, if you want a tolerance, you can offset that just to, in to, to include that tolerance. I'm not gonna worry about it too, too much in this demonstration. Um, 
And the other thing you might want is some openings, so we can introduce some openings, but the smartest way to introduce openings to this is to use the contextual toolbar, which is this window here. So I can add an opening with a single point by clicking that button, picking a point, and that's gonna put a doorway in for me, and you can see it's gonna take the seal track out as well. Um, or we can use um, one of these other tools to introduce a window. So I'm gonna use this rectangular opening to introduce a window, and actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, for wow factor, I'm going to put it across the joint in the um, units. So if I pull up the, the component for this, you can see um, that our panel length is three and a half meters. So basically that means every three and a half meters, we get the panel break. So you can see that's there. But if I put an opening across that panel break, it recognizes that and it configures both those panels to suit. All right, so I can put windows and doors in that, that unit very, very quickly. Um, the other thing that I can do is I can put bracing in here. So if I use another component here, we've got tension and brace with compression bar. I have pre-configured it very slightly. So I've set the level at the bottom, the level at the top and the section size. And that's pretty much all I've done. Um, I can just pick these two columns and in goes a, a cross brace. Okay, um, very simple. Um, once I've got that, I can then select this entire assembly um, and I can start to copy that around. So I copy it up, copy it, copy it along in the Y axis, copy it in the X axis to, to fill out my model. Or I can simply just draw another module on the top. Um, you know, so I can I can snap uh, from sort of there to the other end, um, and then I get you know another module on top. So um, you can configure quite a lot very very quickly with this tool. Okay, um, let's talk about the hierarchical. Um, stuff a little bit more in a little bit more detail. So we've, we've got an example over here that I did earlier on um, and to, to start to look at the, the, the information um, I'll show you what I've done first. So I've called it module 101 and I've given it a prefix and I've done the same thing for the ceiling and the floor cassettes. Okay so to interrogate those the first thing we need to do is we need to switch it to assembly selection so that you're selecting assemblies. Okay when we pick on the whole assembly and we double click on it we bring up the um, assembly information for the whole unit. And you can see what's happened here. It's picked, it's, we've, it's bringing in the assembly numbering prefixes that I put into the component, and it's also bringing in the name as well. Um, so if I wanna look at the next level down, I need to hold shift and rotate my mouse button. And you'll, you should see down in the bottom here that that number zero has switched to one. So that's saying I'm on hierarchy level one. So now when I pick it, I should now only be picking the floor, the roof cassette, for example. Okay, and if I double click on that, I bring the, the information in for the roof cassette. So you can see how that information is bring, being brought through and the same thing for the floor cassette. And then if I roll that up to number two, you can see that again down there, I can start to pick the individual assemblies and that will go for the joist. So I can pick the joist assemblies um, and we can start to look at those. All right, perfect. Um, hopefully you've been wowed by this by this little piece of innovation today inside Tech Structures. If you've got any questions, um, you want to get your hands on it, you want a demonstration, um, or you've got any feedback on how the tool works or any applications of it, do give me a shout, leave me a comment either on YouTube or LinkedIn because I'll be posting this on there as well. Um, or you can, you can email me or any of the team um, and we'd be happy to talk to you about applications for this. All right, this will be available very soon, by the way, on Warehouse. As soon as that's available, I'll share a link. Thanks very much for your attention. I look forward to your questions and I'll see you next time.